This magnificent Lincoln was delivered to the White House on Wednesday, June 14, 1961. Built at a cost of $195,000, it was leased by Ford to the Secret Service for a token $500 a year. The timeless styling of the all-new 1961 four-door convertible provided a natural platform from which to work. Ford Motor Company selected a stock Lincoln convertible from the assembly line and shipped it to bodybuilder Hess and Eisenhardt in Cincinnati, Ohio, where the Lincoln was converted into a parade limousine. Codenamed the SSX100, the body was lengthened in two places, adding an additional three and a half feet, which increased the weight from just over 5,000 pounds to almost 8,000 pounds. A production 430 V8 engine and transmission were selected as the powertrain, coupled to a heavy rear axle. The Lincoln came equipped with a siren, located behind the front bumper, and a two-way radio communication system. These retractable platforms created a safety risk and were rarely used. At the request of President Kennedy, the 61 was painted midnight blue. The interior was trimmed in light and dark blue leather with a dark blue carpet in the rear compartment. To comply with protocol, the car was soon repainted a darker shade of blue as all previous presidential limousines were black. A unique six-piece plexiglass bubble top roof was designed to be assembled in several configurations. A vinyl covering was occasionally placed over the bubble top, but this full-size removable hardtop was generally used when the Lincoln was transported by air. The spare tire was designed into the rear of the car, as the trunk space was essential for storing the bubble top sections and communications equipment and the rear bumper was hand-built, incorporating platforms for agents to ride on. Lap robes, with a hand-embroidered presidential seal, are tucked into special pockets on each door. Shown with Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie, an exuberant president enjoys the occasion as they ride through downtown Washington. The rear seat was hydraulically controlled and could be raised an additional ten and a half inches, providing greater visibility of the president and state visitors. President Kennedy frequently rode in standard Lincoln convertibles, generally when visiting military bases throughout the United States. A few cosmetic updates were added the following year. A 1962 style Lincoln grill and the distinctive 1957 Lincoln Premier wheel covers replaced the original Continental Mark II style. Rear deck grab handles were also installed at that time. When President Kennedy traveled, the 61 Lincoln 
and one of the two 56 Cadillac follow-up cars, affectionately codenamed the Queen Mary II, were always shipped together. These cars were usually loaded in a military C-130 cargo plane, which also carried a few spare parts and extra gasoline when traveling abroad. While the President was seen many times riding in this car in Washington, D.C., and throughout the United States, this Lincoln also traveled extensively in Europe. Occasionally, when crowds along parade routes overflowed into the streets, the agents in the front seat would partially open their doors, moving these people away from the car as the motorcade passed by. After every major trip, the presidential car was usually repainted and scratches and dents were repaired. While riding in the 61 Lincoln through the streets of Dallas on Friday, November 22, 1963, several shots were fired as the car proceeded down Elm Street. This was the last occasion a serving president would ride in an open car. The Lincoln was driven from Parkland Hospital in Dallas back to Love Field and loaded in a military cargo plane for the trip back to Washington. The nation was still in mourning when a task force of 30 people were assembled to consider various concepts in presidential transportation. This group was later reduced to six, representing the Secret Service, the Army Materials Research Center, Pittsburgh Plate Glass, and Hess and Eisenhart. Careful consideration was given to all proposals regarding the presidential vehicle, but the most practical was to rebuild the SSX-100 as there wasn't sufficient time to design and build a completely new limousine for President Johnson. Plans were quickly approved by the White House and the car was returned to Hessen Eisenhart on December 12, 1963, where the rebuild was to be completed. There. The Lincoln was completely gutted. Titanium armor plating was installed throughout the entire rear compartment. The rear brake lines were also wrapped in armor wire. A permanent bubble top roof was installed. To assure adequate rear passenger comfort, a separate air conditioning system was mounted in the luggage compartment necessitated by the increased glass surface. A new hand-built 430 V8 engine was installed with recalibrated transmission. The engine was assembled with selected components. The compression was increased, intake ports in the cylinder heads and manifold were polished, and a high-flow carburetor and premium ignition components were installed. Dynamometer tests run on the new engine confirmed a 17% increase in horsepower over the original engine. A 100 amp alternator was installed to power the additional electrical equipment. The entire rear compartment was completely retrimmed in blue leather. The adjustable rear seat mechanism was removed because it couldn't be used with the new roof. The Lincoln was returned to the White House 
in June 1964. For reasons of his own, President Johnson didn't use the car until October, and then only after it was repainted black. Before its retirement in 1977, the 61 Lincoln served five presidents and traveled just over 55,000 miles. Currently on display in the Henry Ford Museum, it is moving to note that on the anniversary of the assassination, a single rose is placed beside this car, and no one knows from whom. <laughs>